Hey, I'm Ray Latif with BevNet. I'm here with Ken Gilbert, the CMO of Vosswater, and we're at the Vosswater booth here at the 2015 NAC show. Ken, thanks so much for taking the time with us. How are you? I'm good. I'm great. And thanks for uh, giving me a chance to talk about Voss. Yeah, well, one of the interesting things that we're going to talk about uh, in this interview is the new line extension that you have, uh, sparkling, in glass, two new flavors. Tell us about why uh, you're launching these new two products, uh, and particularly why you're launching it here at the NAC show. Well, we have a really good convenience store business, and our business has been growing quite substantially. Uh, and we believe that sparkling, flavored sparkling is going to be big in convenience stores. And also, this show is not just about convenience store owners. A lot of different people come to this show just to see what's happening. So you'll see you know, some major supermarket, uh, uh, supermarkets represented here. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing about these two new products, and we talked briefly about this before uh, we got on camera, was that these aren't your typical flavored sparkling options uh, or flavors for sparkling waters. These are sort of in, you know, from what I saw, sort of spa kind of uh, waters. Uh, you've got a tangerine lemongrass, I believe, and then your other one is a lemon, lemon cucumber. cucumber yes. uh, both really nice, sort of esoteric flavors uh, for sparkling water. Why did you choose to go with those options? Well, before we started this, we, know, we thought about where Voss would want to live in the flavored sparkling arena. And you know, we did some exercises with consumers, and what they told us was that they didn't expect that Voss would make uh, introduce a flavored sparkling that was like others. They expected us to have a combination of flavors. They expected us to introduce flavors that also uh, implied health or some other type of, uh, of an emotional experience. And so that's what drove it. We worked with a company called IFF that's based in New Jersey. Yeah. And IFF uh, you know, played a major role in helping us identify flavors that, that consumers associate with certain experiences. And so mm -hmm. we started from there. So, but what you also see is that you know, there's still the, the packaging is still yellow and orange. So right. we use you know, color cues to, to cue flavors. So I would say that we're not quite exotic. You know, there's a little bit of familiarity, right. but there's also something really interesting at the same time. And I don't know anybody who has lemongrass. At least I haven't seen that yet. Right, right. Now, this particular package uh, is glass. Right. And uh, why do you think glass is going to work in convenience, uh, you know, where it's such a heavily dominated uh, channel for PET and plastic? Because consumers want alternatives. It's a very, very simple. You know, they like to try new things. And, you know, as is typically with the case with Voss, I mean, sure we have people who drink Voss only, but Voss is really very much a, a treat brand for some people, you know. They don't buy it every time, but when they look at Voss flavored sparkling and glass, if they're already in the, the, in the category, they'll look at it as a wonderful alternative. Mm -hmm. Now, that's really interesting. You're talking about Voss being a, a treat, a sort right. of a, a premium option that you don't buy every day, but you buy maybe every few days or every week or something like that. Um, and that sort of speaks to your initial foray into the business, which was as a hospitality kind of based right. brand. How has that transition been for Voss going from being in hotels and restaurants into an everyday kind of, well, at least being seen every day in, in retailers? Well, the thing that's most consistent about the transition from on-premise, which is what we call it, right. and, uh, and retail is our price um, it's always been a premium price. So, you know, we are higher priced in hotels and restaurants, and we're also higher priced in the retail channels. Every single channel, and I get IRI data, you know, every month, we are probably 47 to 51% higher than our closest premium competitor. Mm -hmm. So the transition, you know, was easy to do because we were able to maintain our premium pricing. And we do a lot of social listening. We're really big in social media. As a matter of mm -hmm. fact, we're the number one uh, premium water brand on Instagram. Uh, just as a little side, I don't know if you've ever seen our fruit infusions. Yes. Um, we calculated that um, since we introduced fruit infusions, that's really an organic thing. Mm -hmm. um, on average, about 300 uh, fruit infusion shots uh, appear on Instagram from consumers on a daily basis. Wow. It's really amazing. Yeah. Really amazing. You know, what's happening with the transition is that, you know, we're still premium and, um, and that's how people look at us. So it was easy to do. Uh, and when I said, uh, you know, I, we do a lot of social media listening, 
what that has told me is that our premium image hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. So even though it's readily available in retail, people still associate us with luxury and distinction, and the bottle remains to be iconic. Yeah, and you maintain that with the kind of flavor extensions and the kind right. of and maintaining the bottle shape, size, branding. Right, and so if you look at flavored sparkling, I mean, it's not your typical flavored sparkling bottle. Right. It doesn't scream a lot of color uh, because we want people to expect a nice, subtle flavor. So, you know, we're, we're, we've maintained our mojo that we started in hotels and restaurants right. for sure. Well, this has been fantastic talking with you, Ken. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thanks so much. Thank you. Good luck with the rest of the show. Thank you.